So my name is Sam Wall, and I am recreating uh, the original piece of Claude Maroon by Howard Fly. Um, so now, the original the original piece depicts a pirate who is stranded on a desert island by himself, who's been marooned. So marooned was the practicing of when a pirate would break the pirate code, they would kick him off of the boat and leave him stranded to die on a deserted island. Um, so now, Ply decided to create this piece to try to capture his struggle of transitioning from his more comfortable illustration style to a more traditional fine art style. And he felt very alone and isolated when he did this. So, how am I going to recreate this piece? Well, my idea to reimagine this piece is I'm going to draw the pirate slowly lifting his head up, and I'm going to draw a companion next to him. Uh, to try to help signify hope and you're not always alone and there will also be like another ship out on the horizon to symbolize like his hope that maybe that his isolation and desertion will um, not be forever. But the artwork I'm doing an interpretation on is Maroon by Howard Pyle. Um, it's I'm marooned is when a pirate is left alone in a desert as a form of punishment without, like, in a deserted place without any food or water. So I'm doing a turn on that where I take the pirate who's alone and just make it a, any person who's just alone in a room. And there's a light source coming into the room and there's a lot of shadows in the room and the guy is still left in the dark even though there's light in the room. And my name's Sydney Vakili and that's my painting. So the name of my artwork uh, that I'm uh, taking inspiration from is Maroon by Howard Pyle. Um, and I think the main message of that one was just kind of like isolation. Um, and I kind of imagined like the man in the painting leaning against a building. Um, so I kind of wanted to make it like represent a homeless person being separated from like the rest of society um, due to like social class different differentiation. Um, okay, so for my piece, I use John Sloan's um, procession. To the Cross of Martyrs. Um, okay, so John Sloan was an artist in the early 1900s and he basically painted people in destitute situations in which they were down on their luck. They weren't able to get what they wanted. They were the lowest of society. And through painting that, he eventually joined the Socialist Party in order to, you know, better support the people that he was always painting and his subjects that he grew to care about. So what I'm doing is changing the frame, like the point of view in which the elements of the painting are being shown. So I'm taking a statue of a cross and some of the figures present in the, present in the painting and recontextualizing them in my piece about the beauty and beauty throughout all things like trees, nature, beauty and religion, constellations, the stars, the sky, humanity itself and architecture, all of that combined into one piece. And the beauty of more dull, relaxed colors combined with the beauty of vivid, bright colors and just the night sky overall. The ultimate goal of this piece is just to show what I can do and how I can sh make beautiful things out of anything in different situations and different contexts. And hopefully when the piece is said and done and people actually see it, I hope everyone enjoys it and I really hope that my message is shown to as many people as possible, whoever wants to come see it. My name is Michael Citrino and I am, I don't know what to title this piece, but I am going to do my best. I'm going to make sure I can show what I can do as an artist and prove myself to everyone seeing this video and the actual piece.
Okay, so I'm Kaya Chili and I did the painting. I'm uh, recreating the painting Lady Lil Lilith by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. So in the original painting, it's about uh, this lady named Lilith and she's a character in Christian mythology who's supposed to be like the original wife of Adam before Eve, but she's kind of portrayed as like this temptress who's like seducing Adam. Um, and in the painting, she's like holding a mirror and she's looking like very vain and arrogant. Um, and I'm recreating it to be a little more modern about like technology and how it's kind of taken over our lives. So instead of her holding a mirror, she's holding a phone with earbuds. And it's supposed to be like, instead of her like vain, arrogant look, it's her, her look of Sarah is supposed to be more like of boredom and just like she has nothing to do. And it's supposed to be about how like, we always like go on our phones, even if we have nothing to do, just because we want something to do with our hands. And yeah. My painting, The Love Messenger, was painted by Marie Spartali in 1885, and she was part of the pre-Raphaelite movement, which um, was all about feminism. And The Love Messenger, it's she was actually interviewed about it, and she said that it had really you no know, like deep symbolism, but um, she did mention that it, it was kind of centralized on love because there was a dove and there was a string connect, uh, connected to the dove, which went to a note, and the woman held, held the note over her heart. And then the color scheme was very like warm and romantic. And then also in the corner was a cupid, like embroidery, and like cupid stands for love. So I decided to change the narrative up by killing the bird, because in, in my eyes, love is like dead. Um, and then I also brought her hand down from her heart because I don't really want that connection there anymore. And I'm making the color scheme cooler and kind of more realistic to take away some of the romanticism. Um, my painting that I've made adjustments to is uh, Water Willow by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Um, the, the willows in the original painting, uh, uh, we googled it, they represent uh, like longing and waiting. Uh, so I added a phone into the woman's hand to symbolize that she's waiting for like a text or something. Um, and I think that this also really resonates with me because like I'm not a very patient person. I don't like waiting for things. So she kind of has like a sad look on her face. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all the adjustments that I made to the painting. Hi, I'm Bella Massetta and I'm changing Hopalong Takes Command by Frank Earl Schuchner. Um, he painted the piece about a cowboy hero, and he really emphasized the fact that he had a shorter leg, but it's not that obvious to the audience that he was a hero. So I'm gonna change the piece by switching out the gun in his hand with Captain America's shield to make it obvious to everyone that Someone you wouldn't expect to be a hero can be the biggest hero of all. Hi, my name is Ava Sosha and I chose the piece The Mermaid by Howard Pyle. I chose this piece because it signifies a woman saving a man from a shipwreck and the woman in this piece is a mermaid. We see this recurring image of a mermaid saving a man, like in the movie The Little Mermaid, and she's giving up everything she loves to save the man. I took this idea and I switched the genders into the man saving the woman, and in this piece the man is the mermaid. And I also changed the color of the ocean to a red sea to symbolize the love and even some anger into the piece and really changing the whole entire image. Hi, 
Okay, so uh, my piece is inspired by Howard Pyle's The Mermaid. Um, and in the original piece, he was about to travel to Europe, and so he decided to study some European folklore. And so his original piece is actually of a siren, who is a, which is basically a mythical creature that wants to drown men by seducing them, usually by singing. Um, however, when I first saw the piece, I thought it really symbolized this kind of love or hope in this really calming embrace. Um, so I decided that I wanted to make it more desperate and hopeful. Um, so by doing that, uh, to do that, I made the, the sky really dark and made a bunch of really dark clouds. And then I made the water a lot more violent. And then uh, just to emphasize the characters a little more, I kept the col their colors the same and then made a slight glow around them. Yeah. Hi, my name is Carol Diaz. I chose the piece, uh, The Buccaneer Was a Picturesque Fellow by Howard Pyle. Howard Pyle's meaning behind this painting was to make his own image of a pirate since there had been no real idea of how a real pirate looked like. Um, what I'm changing to this painting is its setting and I'm changing it from the pirate's usual sandy beach background to a more city background and what I'm what I mean by this is I'm trying to show how the world has evolved and made advancements in its clothing architecture and technology Hi, I'm Megan Foster, and I did a recreation of Romeo and Juliet by Ford Maddox Brown. Mine is basically the opposite of what he did. His version was the day version, and of him like leaving. Mine is the arrival, so it's at nighttime, and I turned it into a vampire edition, like he's feeding. 